welcome to Coach Dave Academy. We're going to see my lap with the pickup at Monza. So we're going to see the lap first and then I'm going to go corner by corner with the right approach for them. Right. So now let's go and see what is the best approach for these corners. We basically have this. This track is quite simple. We have chicane, chicane, double right, Ascari, last corner. So we we're gonna kind of separate uh, the first half of the corner. Uh, so the first half of the lap is those two chicanes. So it's very important here to pay attention to the braking capability of the car. Uh, my reference is more or less the end here of. Let me get the camera right. The beginning, actually, of these little plants here, right before the the 150. But hey, it's a visual reference. It's not necessarily. I'm not necessarily breaking there. I'm looking there uh, right before I start breaking. So as you can see, I'm breaking way before it. Um, although that is still my reference. It's funny that we get the car like that when we get out of the cockpit in this camera. Um, as you can as you can see, my peak pressure is more or less there. But I'm starting to break way before um, so always like to 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 reiterate that braking reference especially on a super hard and low and, and long braking zone like that it's super important that you have the right braking reference and that it's not just a reference for when you start braking but also where is your peak pressure because if you have a reference for the beginning of the brakes but then you end up braking slowly then the, the car actually only starts stopping way later and you're not super aware when this later is going to be because you're not aware of how quick you're you're braking sometimes you brake a little bit quicker sometimes you brake a little bit more like squeezing the brakes and this creates a huge inconsistency in the control of the of the speed of the car by the time we start turning in so make sure you have the reference here for your peak pressure peak pressure so that's why i'm starting to break here but my peak pressure reference is the beginning of the little plants there and as you can see Let's compare here the beginning, first percent, look at how close to the 200 I am, but by the time we get on the peak pressure, you can see that I'm, I'm really aligned to that. All right, and then you want to really wait and patiently stop the car. Make sure you're not micro-locking, make sure you're not abusing on the brakes. As you can see, I maintain the brakes pretty consistent there because I know that um, if I get too close to micro-locking and the car starts micro-locking a little bit, it's actually overheating and you're going to have a lot less cornering grip. So make sure you pay attention to having a stable brake and be patient. It's going to take some good two seconds, maybe three seconds for the car to really stop. Also, I'm starting to turn in on second gear. So a good way to control the speed of turn in is choosing a gear before you turn in. So I 
start breaking at six. Five, four, three, wait, wait, two. Now on the two, we start turning. We turn a little bit, and then here I still want the first gear to make the car rotate even a little bit more. And it's very important to not overshoot this entry. You want to bring the car very well here to the right, and then you change direction in a way that you hit um, this sausage curve here at a good angle so you don't have to rotate too much on top of it. Uh, it's very easy to overshoot this corner here and end up stuck here. And at this point, you have to do a huge corner and you lose a lot of time if you do that. So make sure, as you can see here on the chase, I bring the car well to at least the middle of the track by the time I am changing direction. And then I hit the sausage here, I'm at a, at a much better angle. You can hit the sausage a little bit. Make sure you accelerate by the time you hit it. You can see my throttle here. Uh, when I... When I'm about to hit or hitting the throttle, I accelerate a little bit to bring the weight back to the rears. And also, that, that actually matches the, the exit throttle anyways. So I just keep the throttle there. And then we want to have super light hands because this car has a lot of power on exit. You can, you can quickly spin here if you go too, too heavy on the hands. At the same time, you, you put the power down. So more power, lighter hands, relax your hands. The force feedback will bring the car back to a straight line. And you want to be as much as possible here, very close to the gravel. I actually touched the gravel here, and this made me lose 700 of a second. So I lost a lot of time because of that little... Uh, touching the, 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 the dirt, the gravel there, that really made me lose a little bit of excess speed, but then you were really on a long straight here, and we're losing that speed, we're losing that speed. You see the red delta, and you only complain about it, but there's nothing you can do. It was touching that gravel that made you lose that speed. Well, in this case, me. Now we go to the next corner, and we are going to have a similar thing, but here we have a slight difference, and no one really thinks about it. Can you guys see the corner from here? No, we cannot see it. Why is that? Because by the time we get actually on the corner, the track starts falling a little bit. So that is a very subtle crest. And what is the difference between the second chicane and the first chicane? On the first chicane, we have a very flat track, so the grip is neutral. Um, and here, because we are falling a little bit on the braking zone, we have less grip. The car is falling, falling, falling. That one, two, three percent less grip will actually affect heavily your braking, especially on this car that is super sensitive to changes in grip. So, because we can see it, uh, we have less grip at the beginning here. This, like, right under the bridge is where we, we have a little bit less grip. Um, so, and also we have a little bump on the braking, so make sure you are more careful on the braking here than you are at, at the first chicane. And then there's the same thing, just make sure you wait, you wait, you wait, you wait, you wait, you slow down the car, don't brake too hard, don't... Don't try to abuse the braking because you want to conserve the surface temperature so the car can have the good grip to turn into the corner. And here, kind of similar, I think, with the second gear, but I ended up turning a tiny bit earlier um, than, the sec than the gear shift to second gear, but it's the same idea. I I'm trying to synchronize the second gear here and uh, cutting as much as possible this little curb without getting enough track. Before, we could cut a little bit more, but now with the updated off-tracks in iRacing, we cannot cut it that much. So as you can see, I'm putting, you see, um, the center of the car, if it touches this orange curb, uh, well, it's kind of, well, yeah, more orange. This is red, this is orange. Um, we end up getting enough track. So as you can see, I'm leaving a little bit of space, but I'm close. Before, we would get enough track if we touched the, the, the grass here. So now we can cut a lot less, so the lap time is overall slower this season. And then, um, well, what we want to do is cut a lot here. Well, a lot, as much as we can. And then we want to change direction and kind of do a mini jump here on the second one. Same thing, you will get the off track if the center of the car gets on the orange. And as you can see, I'm pretty much on the limit here right before getting an off track. And then a little bit of throttle by the moment you're going to attack the curb for the same reason. You want to shift weight to the back of the, of the car by the moment you're going to impact the curb to minimize the impact of the front tires and the car is going to bounce a lot less. If by the time you, you're going to hit the curb and you like press the brakes, for example, you're going to have a lot of weight on the front and that front hitting the, the curb with the, with the weight all the way there is really less fun. And here on the exit, um, this one is kind of okay to get the gravel because you're not going to be on a straight line for so long. And sometimes the time that you gain by getting a little bit faster exit and, and touching the gravel here is worth it. So we can definitely do that. 
Then we go for, let's say, the second part of the track, uh, Gilesmo 1 and 2. And here, um, we want to be patient. This is a long right-hander, the first one. And the second one is going to be way shorter. We're going to talk about that. So what we want to do here is turn in late, break late, and be patient. Patient, 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 patient. Uh, a good thing for visual awareness that I use is this access road here. So I wait until I see it um, to make sure where the car is because it's a long corner and you can get you can lose track of where you are pretty quickly. So I wait, 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 wait. Okay, I saw it. Power, power, and then you can get the car all the way to the outside. This is actually another difference. Before we could not use all the green, and now with the updates on the off tracks, we can actually use it again. This was actually allowed like a year ago, and then they 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 prohibited it and now they brought it back because everyone was complaining about it but you can really use you will get enough track though if you hit the gravel so be careful with that and this is the shorter corner so this one we don't have to be that patient we just need to slow down turn as soon as we see that we're going to hit the curb here um kind of similar thing we want to get back on power before we hit the little dip because if you can see um let's get the chase here we have a lot of camber on the track itself but then, as soon as we go to the curb, it's the opposite, you see? So we have kind of the lowest part on the white line, and then the curb here is a little bit high, so you hit that, you crash against the curb. Um, so sometimes it's worth to actually go on top of that part that pushes back uh, for the sake of having a better line, but if you do that, and that's what I'm doing, you have to accelerate by the moment you're going to impact the curb for the same reasons we talked about previously. And then here, light hands on exit. Uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, but as soon as we go to the outside here, we start falling. We started. We start tilting to the left here. You see? Look at how the car is falling to the left, falling, falling, falling. It's because the curve on the outside is, is lower. It's kind of off camber, and there's a lot less grip when this happens. When the car is falling, it tends to slide a little bit. So make sure you always take into account that before getting back on power there's going to be a little bit less grip here and even you, you can be 100 percent sure that, that you're not getting the off track on a quality lap and here as soon as you do this the car goes a little bit more to the left you touch the gravel and you invalidate your lap so be careful with that then we go to ascari uh here same thing about the braking remember what i said on the second chicane uh we can't see the corner if we can see the corner, it's because we are doing this. We're falling. And at that moment where the car is lighter, there's less contact between, well, less pressure, less traction between the tires and the, and the track, and you're going to have less braking power. Um, as a bonus, there's one more trap that makes us lock up a lot here. Uh, so here we have a lot less grip, right? So we have to brake a little bit more carefully, more carefully, more carefully. We wait, we wait, we wait. And here... There's a little trap here. At the very beginning of the curb, there's a bump. It's like a little mini, mini, mini jump. But if you brake very hard here, you will lock the tires. Let me see if we can notice it now that you know that it exists. Try to pay attention to it. Okay, you saw it? The car is jumping a little bit on that bump. And you can also see these yellow lights here. Uh, wait, wait for it. Here. This is the first little bump, then the car bounces. You can see it going up, now down. And now we lock the rears. So that's the second bump. We have kind of a mini bump and then a big bump that can make you lock the rears and spin. Uh, the yellow lights represent locking of the rear tires. So imagine how dangerous it is. You're overshooting the entry. You think the car is stopping, but then you hit the bump, you lock the rears, you turn. By the moment you lock the rears, it's in suspend. It's immediate spin if you do that, so be careful. Be careful. I'm, I'm, I was careful about that on this corner because I was spinning actually before when I was trying it. Then we go to the first apex. We want to aim for the first and maybe a little bit of the second. Sorry, the, the second and maybe a little bit of the third curbs. These uh, black and yellow curbs here, as you can see. And the same thing, we're going to get back on power by the moment we attack the curve to lift the fronts, bring the weight back to the rears, and the impact against the curb is much more controlled. And then here we change direction. Be careful not to pull too much the car when you are using this curb because the curb kind of pulls the car and you can spin. So as you can see, uh, when I'm using this 
uh, curve here. You look at my throttle. I'm not 100%. Not 100%. Okay, 100%. But then I'm going to change direction. And then, again, we hit this curve here. Very hard, this one. And then, again, not 100%. Not 100%. Not 100%. Wait for the car to settle. Oops, oops. Not 100%. Okay, settling, not getting enough track, 100%. So lots of throttle control here. Be careful not to get all the four tires on the green because here you will get enough track if you do that. Uh, before the update, we could have center of the car uh, not on the grass and we would get nothing. So it was way quicker, but now we cannot do that anymore. If you touch the grass with a, a little bit of the tire, you already get enough track. Um, then we go to Parabolica, what we want to do, well, what I do here is I use the beginning of this uh, green part on the outside as a braking reference, pretty close to the car, and at the beginning of it, you have a white line. So if you're fighting for a position, you can use that same white line as a reference, as a braking reference. You don't have to be there and panic looking for the green and end up losing your braking reference. You can just look at the white line, it's going to be the perfect braking reference for you here in this car. Then again, same thing, brake, wait, wait, wait. And then when you turn in, um, let me see what gear I'm using here when I'm turning in. Fourth gear. So you see, I, I, I brake on sixth, wait, wait, fifth, wait, wait, fourth. Okay, fourth, we turn in and then even go to third for better engine braking. Patiently, we, can, we have to use this inside curb because it really pulls the car. It gives you a little bit more, more cornering grip. And then when you get back on power here, it's all about controlling the overshear. It's going to be a very long overshear. You can go sideways here if you don't take uh, if, if you're not careful. So as you can see, my throttle is, I'm, I'm controlling constantly my throttle and my steering because the car is really, you see, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of overshear, a little bit of overshear. But then at the very end, you don't have to go all the way to the green because at this point, we are not on the limit anymore. And then we're coming back so we can cut the track a little bit. If you do that, you can gain like 0 0.01, 0 0.02 uh, on this last Part. If you're opening a quality lap, then it's worth it to actually go all the way to the outside, so you can go, uh, you can gain 0.01 by the end of the straight. So it's not a lot of time, but time is time, right? Um, so that is it. This was a 49.0, far from a perfect lap, but it's a it's a very good reference for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you next week. Bye.